You wake up to find Trapper holding your limp body, gingerly pouring cool water into your mouth. You had me worried there, passing out like that. I thought maybe you died. That would have been terrible. Nobody dies on this island without me killing me. You hear that? Nobody. Thanks, I guess? Don't mention it. I mean that. Don't mention it. Someone might think I care for you. That can't help me. I got a reputation to uphold. I'm starting to understand. I think. When you went down, it looked like you hit your head on the edge of the table. If it were me, the table would have been the one to crack open. I'm sure it really hurt you, though. So I figured a little ocean air might help you wake up and I brought you down by the water. Aw, that's really thoughtful of you. What? A magnificent, muscular, wealthy, artistically gifted Adonis can't also be thoughtful? Uh... Don't answer, because it's obvious. Adonis was a pussy. Killed by a boar? Get out of here with that garbage. <laughs> I do find myself in an unusual position, though. Despite the overwhelming probability that I'll eventually find myself standing over your lifeless corpse, I don't want you dead just yet. I'm here to talk to you. Like a regular human person. And right now, I'm worried that I might be coming off a bit too... forceful. I know my mere presence can be intimidating, but I don't want to give you the wrong impression about me or how I feel about you. So I'll just put it out there. I might possibly like you. I can't say that about everyone, or really anyone else on this island. There's something different about you. You aren't like the others. Henceforth, I think it's time I shared something with you that I haven't shared with anyone in a long time. It's a big part of who I am, and I think you're ready for it. You watch as Trapper reaches into a single and pulls out some sort of rolled up scroll of paper. He grips it firmly in his hands. It's one of my sketches. I don't know if you know this, but I love to draw. The arts have always been a passion of mine. It's actually canonic in the lore and the tomes that he does like to draw. Would you like to see it? Yes. I'd love to. I'm so excited you're ready to share this with me. Trapper does not unroll the paper and shows it to you. He simply stares at you and watches your smile soften and fade. And the longer he stares at you, the closer he seems to get. What an interesting response. Thanks, I hope. Trevor looks at you, a piercing look, even though through his mask he smirks, but it's not clear why. Then he turns and leaves. Just things are heated up, you hear a flurry of footsteps behind you and you quickly spin around, ready to defend off whatever new danger has popped up on this strange island. Only to find out Stwight and Claudette sprinting across the beach, clipboards in hands as they're waving in the air above their heads. It's very important we stick to the itinerary. And attend each event as scheduled. Playing sick for cute flirt points was not part of the evening activities. And strictly slotted in for after campfire story time. At this rate, we'll be late. Playing sick? No, I was. No time for excuses. Well, there is, but that's not scheduled for what comes after the flirting. Go, go, go! Once everyone has gathered at the fire pit, Dwight and Claude quickly make an announcement. We're not going to blame anyone in particular, but someone, and we're not going to say who, so don't worry, you, hasn't been sticking to the schedule. That means we're behind on time for evening activities. We only have time for one person to share your special spooky nighttime story. Just one story, but story time is my favorite activity. It's a narrative heavy experience. You're telling us that only one person gets to share? How will we decide who? Oh great, we have to decide as a group? That never goes well. Whoever did this, step up now. I swear I won't be angry. I'll merely chop your head clean off. No fuss, no muss. Voice trembling, you realize this is probably it for you. But you embrace your fate. Sorry everyone. I think they're talking about me. To be honest, I still don't understand how this whole schedule thing works. Hi. Guess I lost track of time while I was passed out? We've been there before, even though it's taking some pressure off of me, which is an absolute dream come true. But is it really fair to pick on the newbie? Seriously, has anything ever happened on schedule even once? Damn it, Donald. If you try to flex that authority gimmick one more time, so help me, I'll snap your head off so quick, and then I'll drown you in your blood. Cynthia. Who's Cynthia? Fuss and muscle back on. You two know how much I love to hack and slash. Oh, hack, slash, and slice. 
We all know you love to kill. It's almost all you ever talk about. Nobody named any names. Who even knows any names? Not us. I renounce mean, my name. Who's Donald? Who's Dwight? Who even knows anymore? Call me nobody. But we still gotta get started on story time, so... Mona, who do you think we should go? Aw, oh, damn it, that's a name! Please pick somebody quickly so the tropical vacation doesn't turn into a bloodbath. Um... I'll go with Trapper. I choose you, Trapper. Whoa, 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 the entire experience is being carefully crafted to avoid an IP infringement lawsuit. Let's be careful with the cra catchphrases, will you? Oh. Sorry, I didn't even realize I made a Pokemon reference. Yes, of course you want to hear my story. It's a good one, and an old one too. This is the infamous tale of two young friends from my hometown. Best buds who did everything and anything together. Fish, hunt, fight, skip rocks, climb the tallest trees, climb the highest peaks. The more dangerous something was, the more they wanted to do it. But everything changed one day when the slightly older friend asked the other for a favor. My father doesn't want me going out with you anymore. He said we're dangerous together. We take risks, we shouldn't, and if we keep hanging out with you, he says one day I'm going to get hurt. Do you think I should come by and tell my dad we'll be careful so we can still be friends? Of course, said the other friend, who was always eager to please his best mate. So the two went to the concerned father, who puffed away at his pipe as he listened to every promise his son's pal made about being more cautious. But when the slightly younger and slightly smaller boy finished, his friend's father responded, stone-faced, No, sorry. This is the best for both of you. I don't want my son hanging out with you anymore, and that's that. The young boy was so crestfallen, he left immediately. No one would even see him cry. He would not give them the satisfaction. Especially because if they did, they might tell others in town that they'd all think him weak. Worse, his own father would never forgive his son for letting others see him that way. Oh god, the boy Z was in a trapper. But he was too upset to go home right away. Or be spotted on the path. So instead he sat aside his friend's house to sit in his little hiding spot. That they had often sat in during rainstorms or when they didn't want anyone to see them trading interesting rocks they dug up. It was quiet. As if he stifled his own tears. And that's when he heard it. A sound of overdo wafting alongside the pipe smoke carried of dark winds. Betrayal. Thanks, Dad. I didn't want to hang out with him anymore. But I didn't want to tell him that he'd be a big baby. Oh my god. Oh! It's okay. I don't get it. I get it. Don't blame you. I don't blame you at all. He's soft and needy. You need strong friends. Someday you'll really would have ended up getting hurt because of him. You need friends you can rely on. Trapper looks angry. The muffled tears stopped at the hiding spot. That had been a pit of sadness now overflowed with rage. The boy went home. If anyone passed him on the path, they all saw his determination. That night he spoke to oh no one. He ate no dinner and slept no slept. No sleep. The next day he got up early and sat near the tallest tree in the woods by his former friend's house. It was the one tree no kid in town had ever conquered. Its top remained untouched. He remained there till dark before he finally went home. He did this for eight days. On the ninth, his old mate finally passed by. Hey, what you doing there? Asked the Judas. Nothing. Out hunting squirrels and sat down to eat this apple, lied the younger boy. Oh, uh-huh, yeah, sure. I hope you're okay. I can't believe my dad did that. It's so unfair. Yes, it was truly unthinkable. Answered the boy through a smile that carried no warmth. Yeah, well, okay, I'll see you around. But before the betrayer could leave, his old friend called out for him. I'm going to climb this tree. He said, I'm going to make it to the top. The hell you are, no one can do that. And they definitely can't do it by themselves. He had him. I can and I will. You understand why I can't though. Your dad said you're afraid to get hurt. I'm not afraid, he's afraid, replied the friend now seething with shame and with his own rage. Oh, forget what my dumb old father said. I'll do it with you, you'll see, I'm not afraid. And so the two climbed and climbed, each making it higher than they'd ever been before and they continued to climb but whether they would have reached the top will never be known because the turncoat the boy who made his father lie for him fell before he could make it all the way up 
Some say it was Olden. Some say it was no accident that his old chum pushed him. But how could he? He was the weak one after all. Of course, such a weak child could never send his best friend to his death. It was an accident, tragic for sure, but nothing more. Of course. A month later, though, no one could explain how the dead boy's father choked to death on his own pipe. Uh, yeah, definitely a good call staying quiet after that. Silence really is best at a time like this. Shit. What about you, Boner? What do you think of my tale? I'm a. Were you the boy in that story? Were you the boy in that story? What a stupid, stupid question. On that note, everyone decides it's time to take a break and split up for a little bit so that they can all have a moment alone before bed. Everyone leaves and you're alone by the fire. The only thing you hear is the ocean slowly lapping against the shore. This is nice. A true moment of peace and tranquility that lasts for all seven seconds because Trickster, show Trickster shows up and he's blaring his latest song. What, what voice did I have this for this guy again? Hey, baby, you look lonely. Mind if I join you? Uh, maybe I should... I was gonna say maybe I should speak Korean, but I don't know Korean and it would sound super racist. He doesn't wait for an answer. I know you've been hearing from these guppies all day, but I want you to hear something from a big fish like me. Something special those... Something special those in charge of this island don't want you to hear. I am the ultimate catch on this island. The only lobster in an ocean of sardines. No one can give you what I can. You just have to find me. Come find me, baby. Trickster leaves. You're a bit confused about what to make of his cryptic clues, but you are, aren't are going to get any time to yourself to think about them just yet. Trapper approaches you. Finally, those dweebs are gone. Now that I know we're totally alone, we can really talk. Well, let's get away from this ash and smoke to take a dip in the pool. Whether it's water, sweat, or my enemy's blood, I prefer my muscles glistening and not dried. A dip in the pool with a trapper. You've come a long way in a single day. I'm not saying you should follow him. An offer like that. Just don't forget our little talk. Yeah, I'll follow trapper into the pool. You and your storyteller friend slip into the water! It's just the right temperature for an evening dip. Plus, if some jealous shark comes along and manages to jump from the ocean into the pool, you're also pretty sure your killer companion would handle it. Trapper looks surprisingly relaxed. That's definitely weird. Oh, okay, the small bubbles rising up in the water around him might have something to do with that. Look, Boner. I don't want to reveal anything in front of the others. You never know when a loser is really a maggot. Now, though, I want to hear what you really thought of my story. What was its real purpose? Honesty is important. To show why honesty and integrity are so important? Very interesting. Very. Trapper stares at you for way too long. It almost looks like he cracks the barest of smiles, but then more small bubbles appear in the water. Oh, god damn it! He's still staring. He stares for such a long time, it becomes quite romantic. And then, as it keeps going on, it becomes downright horrifying. A chill runs down your spine. Finally, Dwight and Claudette show up and say everyone is reconvening at the fire pit. How dare you interrupt me? I mean us. No, wait, me. I, I meant me. Trapper throws his cleaver at Dwight and Claudette's feet. Where the hell was he even hiding his cleaver? More importantly, what do you think of his cleaver toss? Clever wordplay. You're alright by me. Oh my god, he gave me a gold coin. A gold coin! Trapper flips you a gold coin. Which he definitely was keeping in his crotch. It's too warm to have been anywhere else. You feel your toes tingling and notice the temperature has dropped significantly. It's getting chilling in the water. Usually it's so warm around you. You mind if I snuggle up your way? Yes, I do mind. Ah. Before we spend too much time watching you sit there all alone, trying to figure out exactly what you're doing with your life, 
We figured you'd let you know it's time for bed. And you're kind of the last person out enjoying the facility, so, well, the thing is, you see... We really can't get our night started until you're in the end, so... Hang up, kiddo. Your fireside sleeping arrangements await. You head over to the campfire. The heat is comforting on this chilly night. Looking at the crackling embers, you think about Trapper's story. Are you being led to your demise by an untrustworthy narrator? Hey, wait a second. I swear to you that you're not. Come on, you gotta trust me at least a little more than you trust Trapper. Before you can dwell too much on your fate, Claudette and Dwight will arrive. There are now familiar creepy smiles stretching from ear to ear. It's a bit menacing to see a smile like that lift by firelight. We must apologize for our accommodations. We weren't prepared for another guest. But we're going to make you comfortable or die trying. They hand over a pillow and a blanket and welcome you to snuggle up by the fire. Perhaps some music will put you at ease. Just try to keep the volume to a minimum. Our other guests aren't the type you'll want to rob of your beauty sleep. The games consist of two parts on top, a pointer, which rotate. Yes, I know how this works! Wait. It's perfect for the less coordinated because there's no winning or losing. Well, that's the result. I suppose if it doesn't stop where you want it to, that'll, that'll be a bit like losing, but no one has to know if you don't tell them. Okay, ready to play? I'm ready. Ready. Away we go. As soon as you relax and look into the fire, the radio begins to fuzz and flicker. You examine it and decide that you just might adjust the dial a little bit. Oh shit, um... Let's see what's on this station. Yeah, I'll listen. Alright, let's talk about our community. For us, it means uh, two major things. First of all, the community- This is Matthew Coy! It's you and everybody else, either playing the game or talking about the game- It's Matthew Coy, the lead developer of Dead by Daylight! Inspired by the game to write music or to make outfits. It's everybody that's part of what makes Dead by Daylight this amazing- Let's see what's on this station. Oh, it's the clown's main menu theme. It's quiet, but I like it. Um. Never heard this before. Okay, okay. Okay, we've heard this one. It's on 90. Ah, uh, let's listen more. Okay, that's clown's theme. Ah, uh, stop. First of all, the community... Turn it off for now. No matter how many things you listen to, you still can't sleep. You decide to ask one of the killers to spend a little more time with you until you're sleepier. Who would you like to summon by your side as you lay by the fire? Uh, Trapper. I feel like I might get murdered for it, though. Trapper? Are you around? I was wondering if I could get a little company. Trapper tells you 
his secret for falling asleep when he feels restless. A heavy bearskin blanket is all you need. If that doesn't work, just go for a late night walk and punch the first person I come across. You're a real charmer, Trapper! I'm not sure I'm brave enough to kill a bear, or skilled enough to skin it. You're certainly not either of those things, as far as I can tell. Ow! Here, hold on to this. Try not to hurt yourself. It's, a. Uh... Trapper hands you an entire bear's paw, complete with the sharp claws! It's like the most aggro version of a rabbit's foot you've ever seen! You finally start to feel sleepy, except... Maybe this isn't really a sleepy feeling. Maybe you're paralyzed. You try to keep your eyes open, but you can't. Darkness overtakes you. A dark voice from earlier speaks to you again. It shouldn't still be as spooky by now. You've had a whole day of strange voices in your head. But this one is still unbelievably odd. Look, I'm not saying that my feelings are hurt because you chose to swim with some pathetic little teacup when you could have swam in the vastness of an entire, uh, me, I guess. What I'm saying is that you've made a foolish decision and I won't forget it. My feelings aren't hurt. I just lost some respect for you, that's all. You awake suddenly to see someone looming over you. Huntress is rifling through your pockets! Oh, you're awake! I wasn't stealing from you. Really trying to get to know you better by seeing what sort of trinkets you keep close. I saw you with Trapper right before bedtime. Look, I'm not saying I don't trust them, but... Well, yes, I am saying that. I don't trust anyone I don't... Already have tied up. So I'm making sure they don't do anything... Fishy. And th and I was making sure you're not a soldier. Soldiers killed my father, you know. Well, I got you. I should really consider spending more time with me. I'm not scary. You're not? Even though you're wearing a blood-soaked mask and holding up a blood-soaked axe towards me. Not at all. I'm just a lost girl on a big island. I've been watching you since you got here, you know. Not in a creepy way. Huntress pauses for a long moment. All right, in a chiming, creepy way. I've noticed how fun-loving you seem. If you spend more time with me tomorrow, maybe I'll take you to the special place I found. It's all mine. None of the other killers have been able to find me there. It's quiet and isolated. Maybe I'll even show you how to make beef stroganoff. That all sounds very exciting. I'll let you get back to bed. It's been a long day. Shh. Huntress places a gigantic hand on your forehead, and your eyes flutter closed. Finally alone for real this time, maybe. You drift up to sleep again. Hopefully you're not poisoned. Wait a second. Where are we? This isn't... Oh, jeez, it is. It's one of those reality show confessional rooms where we all have the contestants talk directly into the camera. Look, I don't need anyone. I've been perfectly fine on my own since my mother died. I eat an all-organic diet of raw deer, bear, and human. And I'm fit as a fiddle. That being said, something about this newcomer makes me think that I might be missing out on some huge part of this thing called life. There's always a time to turn things around. Like that one time I spent day and night searching for food in vain, only to return to my cabin, spend and starving, to find a family of squirrels nesting in my chimney. They were delicious! If I'm being honest, I want to kill just about every person I meet within a minute of meeting them. Even the few people I can tolerate, I want to suffer for a long time before I kill them. But this person, for some reason, I would like them to continue living. For now. One false step in. <laughs> well, you know, everyone calls me the Trapper for a reason, and they better call me Trapper. I swear if I watch this later and you list me as Evan, I'm going to kill you, the Ch Chiron guy. Yeah, today was fun. I don't want to get ahead of myself or really, um, invest in something that might hurt me, so, I don't know. Maybe I'll just see how it goes, or maybe they'll realize I'm not the one for them. They seem pretty smart, so that'll probably what'll happen. I gotta learn to go easier on myself. Who could love me if I can't love myself? I know that everyone thinks of me as beautiful, cold-blooded monster. I can't help it. Circulation just isn't my thing. I don't choose to be cold. This cute little hat and robe, those are a choice, sure. If someone were to come around and capture my heart, at least that beats being stabbed in it. Besides, if I'm gonna get bloody revenge on a society that used me and threw me away, maybe it wouldn't hurt to have a little help. Still alive! Hey, I'm not dead! You open your eyes. The sun is shining. There's not a cloud in the sky and you feel great. Totally well rested. 
You're not even suspicious of the fact that you fell asleep by a campfire, but woke up several yards down the beach. Wait, are you on vacation? Was yesterday nothing more than a strange dream? No, not a dream. You really are here for another day. Why? I have no idea. You're obviously a weirdo. Speaking of weirdos, the rest of the gang is hanging out on the beach. This is definitely not a dream. I wouldn't rule out Nightmare just yet, though. At least they make up for be by being a sexy bunch, no? And talk about sexy, here comes Trickster, carrying coffee! Morning, beautiful. I thought you might like a nice cup of joe to start this incredible day off right. Trickster seems suspiciously cheerful. I'm sure there's nothing nefarious behind his joyful demeanor, though. Everyone knows musicians are morning people. I also want to wish you luck. Today's an important one. My only regret is that I won't be a bigger part of it. Budgeting issues. Also, I just... I'm just swamped with engagements, especially on the other island. Trickster winks at you. If you want to ask him how to reach the other island, now's the time. Never mind, he left. Well, at least he brought me a cup of... No, wait, wait, don't drink that. What the hell was that? They don't call him Trickster because he's good on a skateboard. We definitely didn't get that name because he brings people drinks so they can have a good morning. That was almost certainly not coffee. And I don't want anyone casually poisoning, imprisoning, or torturing you. Yet. This is supposed to be a tropical paradise. The type of place you give a 5 out of 5, 10 out of 10, 2 thumbs up, and a review to not an eternal prison of pain. At least make sure to leave a review. It really helps with the algorithms. Just trust me. I'm looking out for you. So can we please move on? Hey, wait a second. How did a possibly omniscient, possibly unreliable narrator physically just knock that coffee out of your hand? How did he do that? This is not parliament and the floor does not recognize the ocean to speak out of turn at this moment. I need no recognition, for I am the ocean. I dominate the land. I submerge those who defy me, and I become their watery grave. Actually, speaking of graves, I'd like to say something. Something of grave importance. Fine, go ahead. Even if this place is an eternal prison of pain, and I'm not saying this, even if a place of extreme horror can still receive a 5 out of 5, 10 out of 10 thumbs up review, it was crafted with love and, and or that's the type of thing you're into. You know, the ocean is right. A lot of hard work does go into a place like this. You should really judge it on the artist's intent, and whatever possible starts from the mindset of giving them the benefit of a doubt. Constructing these elaborate simulations, I mean vacations, is not easy to do. Sometimes there are small bugs or inconsistencies, but that's just the nature of the process. Perfection is overrated. The universe is filled with mysteries. We ought to celebrate those who venture to bear cells as part of a creative process with the ultimate intent of making things for our enjoyment. Not to be overly critical of them, okay? I get it! Are you two trying to sell me on this place actually being good? You don't have to say it like that, especially after I saved you from that poorly made cup of coffee. Sorry, we should have been here five minutes ago. Hero, they always do this in the second morning. Sad, really? Even if they do make some great points. Oh, I'm sure they make great points, I agree! Can we please move on? Yes, of course. Apologies, Boner. The last few minutes aside, have you really enjoyed your time here on the island? Yes, it's. I've been having a lovely time. If I had to summarize my time here, I'd call it a lovely time. Ah, oh, lovely. We'd love to hear that because isn't that what this place is all about? Finding love? No. Shut up, Dwight. You'll get us all killed. Again and again and again. We don't need to ask you more questions, though. We all had to sign away our rights to say anything negative about this place. Would you please sign this non disparagement agreement? Sure. Yes, I would hereby agree to participate in a verbal contract stating the I, Boner, We'll never say anything negative about my stay here on this island. Perfect. Delightful. Excellent. Yes, yes. Hey, Boner. It's still totally cool if you have constructive feedback. This place... The place to leave that is in the positive review, because we all know that nobody reads negative reviews of games or resorts like this. 
Anyways, I see Dwight and Claudette have gone into a trance. And with the grumbling I hear from your belly, that can only mean one thing. Breakfast. <laughs>